social growth and the coronavirus. Everybody is talking about how coronavirus is growing exponentially, but like, what does that actually mean? So I'm glad you asked, cause that's what we're gonna go over today. So let's say you have an exponential function. You gotta know a little bit about it before we get into the nitty gritty, right? Exponential functions usually look like f of x equals b to the power of x, where your variable is actually gonna be your exponent. That's why I call it an exponential function. So your x is a power and your b is what you call your base. Cause you know, it's all about that base, about that base, no treble. That only works if b is greater than zero and when b cannot be equal to one. So what does that have to do with the coronavirus? It is real. It is, it is real. Okay, so I'm being cringy. All right, so I'm glad you asked because that's what we're going to talk about. So let's say hypothetically, right? You got Marky. Marky's mom is a nurse. She came home from working at the hospital. He ran outside because he missed his mom. And before she got all the hospital stuff off of her, he gives her a hug and she he contracts the virus from her, okay? So on day zero, you have one person at your school with coronavirus. This is a Sunday. Marky goes to school on Monday, right? Um, we're in English class and his English teacher decides, hey, today would be a good day for partner work. And so he partners up with Darnell. Marky a little bit nasty. So <laughs> homeboy forgot to wash his hands. And so he gives it to Darnell. Now they both feel good. That's why they're at school, right? They both feel good. They're at school. They're not showing any symptoms. So they go home, they come back. And on day two, on Tuesday, um, what happens is Darnell is in the hallway and um, he forgets to block his sneeze appropriately. And uh, he gives it to Keisha, passing in the hallway during seventh period, all right? And then Marky goes to science class and his teachers are on some other stuff. So his science teacher gives him a group project also, and he's working with Felipe and he gives it to Felipe because Marky still ain't wash his hands, oh my goodness. So on day two, now four people at your school have the coronavirus. On day three, all four of them feel great and they still go to school and everybody's just walking around everybody spreading germs to everybody so now the four of them spread it to another four people so i've doubled again and now eight people at your school it's only day three it's wednesday people's hump day and then so on day four they all go to school again they spread it to another eight people and now you have 16 people at your school it's only day four it's thursday so now we get to friday it's the weekend baby um and you want to know what those people spread it to another um, 16 people. And so now I have 32 people. We're off the graph at this point. That curve is rising exponentially. That's what we call it, okay? And there's 32 people at your school now with the coronavirus. So hypothetically, let's look at day 10, right? How would I figure that out? It's off the graph. I can't really see it. I don't feel like doing that math. Well, I'm gonna plug it into that model, f of x equals two to the power of x because my growth rate right now is that everything is being doubled. So I'm gonna do two to the power of 10. And when I do that, what I'm gonna get is 1,024 people. And you're like, yo, that's cat because there's not even 1,024 people at my school, some of you, okay? At our school, there's a lot more than that. <laughs> and then what about day 20, okay? I do two to the power of 20, and then there's a million people who have contracted the virus. That's for sure a lie because a million people is way more people than are in your school. So that's a great observation because exponential growth is a model that works when there's nothing there to suppress the growth, nothing there to stop that growth rate. That's when something grows exponentially. But we know that there are ways to help stop the spread of the virus. There are ways that we can help. Number one, washing your hands like everybody's telling you to do. So don't be like Marky, don't be nasty, wash your hands, stay home home i know some of you you miss your boyfriend you miss your girlfriend you miss your homies but listen no sneak meats you need to stay in your house because if you have it and you're not showing symptoms you go spread it to somebody they're not showing symptoms but they might have somebody at home with some health complications now they don't spread it to them without knowing because y'all did a little sneak meat you snuck out you went to go see a little friend and now somebody else's life is in jeopardy um and they might spread it to somebody else we just don't know so that's why it's important to stay home and the number three is always a vaccine so right now the dangerous thing about coronavirus honestly is the fact that there is no vaccine yet so that's why it's hard to stop the spread and the easiest way for us to stop the spread is by having good hygiene, okay? Staying home, washing your hands. Because that way, until we have a vaccine, until we have a cure, until we stop the spread, flatten the curve as everybody else is, as everybody is saying, without a vaccine, the best way for us to do this is to wash our hands, stay at home, follow the directives of the CDC so that this growth does not happen exponentially like everybody is saying that it is. Hope that helps. Catch you in the next one.